So there are other rules related to clearance. Yeah. So especially, for example, there's the 15 mil behind the front wheels. Can you talk us a little bit about that one? Well, yeah. Uh, with for that one, we have in one of our gauges just a rectangle, as you can see. And it shows 15 millimeters across, and we can just take that and place it like that behind the wheel and check that there is clearance. Enough clearance, perfect. Right. But now there's also, in the rear wheels, a clearance factor, isn't there it? There is, of three millimeters. And if we measure this, we'll see this is three millimeter acrylic, right? And uh, we can check here, is there three millimeters clearance there? And the That's acrylic just, should just be held. Turn the car um, a little bit I more. I should say, yeah, the acrylic should be held vertically, of course. It's no good putting it at an angle, isn't yeah. it? It has to go vertical. Yeah. So front, rear, that's okay. But if we come to here, Let's just turn. Yeah, we'll just turn it around. You'll see that this one doesn't fit down. So this would be a fail. Yeah, so see guys, just a, clear, a simple way of checking the clearances. So don't forget to try and download this set of parts and uh, laser cut them and you have a quick way of checking before you take your car into a competition that you are complying with every single rule and regulation. But let's talk Let's talk more about other, other simple ones. Um, for example, wheel rotation. Wheel rotation, um, I don't have it here, but we have a ramp. Yeah and it's set at two degrees and uh, it's made from car track material and we set the car on it and we let the car run but sometimes down. sometimes the, 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 when the, when the students see. are preparing their wheels and they try and spin it and we for example have an example here and how easy it, the wheel is spinning but sometimes students present their cars and they try to rotate the wheel and the wheel really struggles to rotate you may be complete half of the diameter of the wheel and then stops. That, that, is that a compliance with rotation? Uh, well, if, if it, we set it on the ramp yeah. and we sometimes put little dots on, if we have trouble seeing if the wheel is actually rotating because if you look at the aluminium disc, sometimes it's hard to tell if the wheel is rotating. So we will put a, a little sticker on the wheel just to see and set it. And we don't force the car. It has to run freely of its own accord down the ramp. So it's not only important for scrutineering, guys, but of course when you go onto the track, you want your wheels to be spinning like, like that and yeah. like that. But as you can see, uh, these are very difficult to work out if they're turning because the hubcaps don't turn in this car. So the scrutineer has to be very observant, so we just take a little sticky dot and put it on. Right, a lot of scrutineering techniques that we're learning today. Um, So let's, let's, for example, simple stuff, but it's also easy to, to, to fail. There is a specific rule that uh, asks you to check if they are using an official sticker. And this hap happens a lot on the regional finals, for example, where they, well, team think they are using the official sticker, but it just has a different dimension. So we also have a tool to check that, don't we? Yeah. Well, this is to give a visual check. So we would hold that against the car. Um, and like this, no, that's not really a good example. Maybe I will come back to this car. Um, I want to refer to this in a moment. Okay. Um, this one here. So you can see that this uh, complies. It's the full size of the gauge. Okay. And that's so that's the official dimensions of the uh, of the sticker that the teams can download from the website. Exactly. But also you will find where they maybe have made their side pod too small, they will fold it over the top, and that is a fail. Right. Because unless we can see from the side the complete sticker, yeah. um, it will fail. Because as a sponsor, F1 Schools wants their logo to be clearly seen, not tucked over the edge on every car. And don't forget to check the rules and regulations to see exactly where you need to put the, the sticker because it happens a lot when the team arrives into the event and asks, where should I put the sticker? But it's not on the event you need to make that decision. Right. But um, remember, it has to be completely visible, so you should be seeing all four corners from the side. Exactly. Um, going, going back into... into oh, I'm sorry, just, I, maybe just pick up on this one. Yes, yes. Um, go back there's another one that people 
for file off, and that is the contrast. The contrast. Can you, can you just turn the car into the camera, please? Right. Now, this one has a white outline on a white car. Yeah. And it states in the rules that it should be contrasting the outline. So, for a white car, this sticker should not be it's used. It's not the recommended one. decal should not be used. Uh, we should be using the one with a black outline, this one here, to give a contrast, because you want to see the rectangle. It's not a massive quantity of points that the team loses, guys, but a point is a point, and in the end, one point can decide a regional champion, a national champion, or a world champion. And you don't want to miss out no. on your dream because of a of exactly. of color of the sticker. Um, but going back, going back, for example, we, we, we saw how easy it is to, um, to fail uh, ground clearance. Uh, but, for example, weight. It was really easy to fail length because of an assembly problem or a deformation of a 3D part. But weight is one of the most tricky things, isn't it? Because the minimum is 50 grams. Uh, for, for a professional class team, there's different weights for development class and entry class. But focusing a little bit on professional class, uh, teams are producing um, the body of the car using a model block, yeah. using a CNC machine, then they are manufacturing 3D parts or, uh, uh, or other techniques of producing the parts for their car. So. What do you think, in your opinion, is the best way for them to check that in the end, where they have all the parts, they will comply with those 50 grams and it not is, stay under? It is very difficult. Um, and I'm not saying how to cheat or anything like that, but there are ways of getting the weight up. Obviously, lacquering your car. You would be surprised how much a coat of paint weighs. So when you're assembling it, it may be a good idea to assemble the whole car and then see how much he's weighing exactly. and then deciding how much paint to put it on. Some people put it, for example, onto a painting jig. Then you could weigh the painting jig and the car and keep spraying lacquer until the combined weight is up to whatever. And of course, the, the, the quality of manufacturing that the scrutineering judges also do, uh, when you have an amazing finish, on it will also give you extra points. So. Uh, and it's not just the top of the car, it's underneath the car as well, because this one in particular you can see has a terrific finish under, underneath. Underneath also, so it, it, don't, don't forget the finish uh, uh, underneath the car, guys, so it's not m just making it look good from the top view. Uh, but this is where the students can reach out to the industry, isn't it? This is where you guys need to learn and, and do the questions and build partnerships because you can obviously go into the supermarket and buy a spray and and a spray paint and, and it's fine, it's in budget, but try and research ways of increasing the quality of your finish because a good finish will also be important but for the But there's nothing wrong with an aerosol, if used correctly. You will get that degree of finish with a good aerosol. So, as, uh, so they're going to have to prepare the car just before going with it the is, aerosol, yes. isn't it? It's getting preparation beforehand, using the right primers. The right primer, yeah. And uh, sanding it down with very fine green paper. Okay. Um, so let's. This is this is all the tools that they can use to measure their car, but there are rules that are measured that they are checked in their technical drawing. So the technical drawing is 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 the document that the teams also had to hand over hand in uh, before the competition starts, and. The technical drawing will show you dimensions also on the car, isn't it? That's right, and will also indicate things like the virtual cargo and the wing surface, front and rear. So my, from my personal experience in the regional finals, and I, I, I guess it also happens in the nationals and world finals, it's really easy for a team to forget, for example, to identify the virtual cargo or the wing yeah. in the technical drawing, isn't it? It is, but there's an easy way of doing it. I tell teams, uh, if you create a void in your drawing, in other words, use the shape of the virtual cargo and create uh, a void of that, then it will appear in all elevations where it is going to be. And it will also show you if your virtual cargo is protruding through 
the bodywork at this point. So. There, there are several ways of identifying yeah. the virtual cargo in the wings, isn't it? So it's all explained in, in the in the rules and regulations for the for each competition. You guys just need to read the, the, the document really careful. Um, we, we have tools then for measuring it as well. For example, it's quite difficult to measure if the virtual cargo is in this region for some teams to work out, is it actually there? We would use things like these to go in and check the thickness at this point. But what I wanted to reinforce is the, the technical joints are really important because if a, if a scrutineering judge is having a specific question about a part of the car, he's going to refer to the technical joints, isn't he? Yes, obviously. Um, there is no tolerance, as I said. It's an absolute dimension. So, you know, uh, all the instruments are quality instruments that we're using and calibrated at the factory. And uh, we uh, take care in measuring and that we're following the way, the, the way and the instructions that are in the technical regulations. Okay.